So, this lecture is about Delta table and SQL warehouse. We will also cover topics which will help you in the exam 203 Data Engineering on Microsoft Azure. The learning objectives are we will go into Delta table, we'll ingest data into a Delta table, we'll load file data into a Delta table, we'll create catalog tables, we'll create an external table, create a manage lab, manage table, compare external and manage tables and use Delta tables for streaming data. All this will be done in Azure Databricks. What is a Delta table? It enforces schema enforcement. It is ACID compliant. It supports time travel. It supports upserts. It has got fine-grained security control. I also have a separate Delta deep dive in 14 minutes in a separate video in my Apache Spark playlist. Please do visit it. I will post the link in the comments also. So now let's jump in and go into the lab in which we will show of how we can explore the Delta, Delta Lake in a very exhaustive manner. I had already created a Databricks workspace. It is WSCG and I have launched the workspace and it is here. So the prerequisite is that I have created the cluster, I have created uh, and I have exported this uh, notebook into here. So the first step is that we would get the data into the Databricks and this is the products.csv. We are getting it into the DBFS file system. So the notebook is automatically attaching it to my current cluster. So I've got the data here. I am reading the products.csv. We are now loading the file into the Delta table and please note how we are doing it, which is write.format delta and we are saving into the delta table path. The delta table path is shown here. It is delta slash products delta. The data for the delta lake is stored in a parquet format. A log file is also created to track modifications made to the data. So let's see what are the files which are being created. So here is the uh, data file which is in the parquet format. What we can do here is also can we just look into the delta log. So we need to execute this cell command. So star is percent sh. So you see that these are the delta logs which are being created. The file data in the delta format can be loaded into a delta table object where we can use to view and update the data in the table. We will now see of how to update the price of a product 771 by 10%. You see we are loading the we are loading into the delta table object. We are updating the table also and we are making the product ID as 771 and the list price is list price star 0.9. So here while it is doing, so here it is updating the list price to 3059. 
we can also load the delta table here in this manner. We can also do the time travel capabilities of delta lake to view previous versions of the data. So, to view the original version of the data, we use version as of 0. 0 is the previous version. Now, you see here the previous version has the as 3399 as the product ID of 771. But if you go here, the product ID 771 is having 3059 in the latest version. So this is how you can do time travel. It is maintaining different versions of the data. The log contains a full history of modifications to the data. So here we can see the last 10 changes. So, so the version 0 is the one that is being created and then you see in the next version in the version 1 we are doing an update and these are the things that have been updated and the option parameters that is done is this and it is saying that it is update is the operation that have been done. So this is how you can see the different uh, history of the delta, delta lake. Now till now what we have discussed is the delta lake. Now what we will see is that how we can use the spark, this um, delta lake as a BI data warehouse and we can do BI on top of it. So, what we will do is now we will define the catalog tables that encapsulate the data and provide a name table entity that we can reference in SQL so, Spark supports two kinds of catalog tables for Delta Lake. The external tables that are defined by the path to the parquet files containing the table data and the managed tables that are defined in the Hive Meta store for the Spark cluster. So, we, here what we are doing is that we are creating a new database called AdventureWorks. Then we are creating an external table, you see products external using the delta location which is a delta table path and we will also describe it. Now what it will do is that it will put an entry into the catalog and this will help us to query in a SQL warehouse. Now we can do a select star from products external here. Now, we will see if we switch to the SQL warehouse, let's open it in this tab. While it is opening, let's also see the manage table. The manage table stores its data files in the Hive Meta store for the Spark cluster. So, this is a manage table which is storing uh, in the Hive Meta store. Now, we did not specify a path for the parquet files. The location is in the DBF's user Hive Warehouse Adventure Works to DB products managed. From a SQL perspective, there is no change. But what happens is that that it is managed in a completely different way and we will explore the difference between the external and the managed tables in the next section. But before we go into that, what I would like to show you is that these tables that we had created 
I can reference it in the SQL editor. So, so this is Adventure Works, the database that we had created. Now you see, as a BI analyst, I can use this very seamlessly from this editor. So it is in a very seamless way, whatever we have done in the notebook, we can view it and we can see all this data here. Similarly, we can also get a select from the products managed table. We will compare the external and managed tables also here. We can show the tables here. Now let's take a look at the folders on which the tables are based. So here you see that the uh, dealt external table is, is based on two files, the snappy parquet the two versions which is here and the manage table is also here. Now what happens if we use a drop statement to delete these tables from the database? So if we use a drop statement, what will happen is that these tables will be dropped. So the metadata for both the ta tables have been removed from the database, but what about the delta files? So what we are saying is that for the managed table, there is no file left. The table has been dropped. Therefore, the files have also been deleted. But for the external table, the table has been dropped, but the files remain in the same position. We can also create another table using the files in the product delta. Now, if I go back to my SQL warehouse and if I see these two tables will disappear because they have been dropped and now we have the products table. So there is a seamless integration here with the SQL warehouse and you can also do a select star from products here. Now, what we will do here is that we will use delta tables for streaming data. This is another topic that we are discussing here. The first thing is that we will get a JSON file from GitHub. And it has got two things at the device ID and the status. Here what we are doing is that we are creating a source stream and we are giving the input path. The source stream is created and we will write this source stream into a delta table path. So we can load it and see the data. We are creating uh, IoT device data and we can also see this here also, if we just go here, the table is being created here. We can see this here. Now, 
Now let's add the devices to.json and we can see the device data also coming up here from the IoT device data. So this is how we can use the delta table also for streaming. So what this lecture had given is that it showed what is a delta lake, how you can insert and upsert data into the delta lake, how you can use delta lake for time travel, how, what is the benefit of having tables, how it can, it is linked to the SQL warehouse, there is a concept of an external table and a managed table and also we have seen of how we can use it for uh, streaming data. Hope you like the lecture. Thank you. Bye.